Welcome to Roof Topics. My name is Leon van Geest and today we are on a very not so green rooftop. And I'm talking to Jan Henk Tichelaar of Rooftop Revolution and Esther Wienesse who wrote a book about the Rotterdam rooftops. And they are involved in a project which uses a neighborhood approach to get all roofs like these green in Rotterdam. Well, hello, Jan hello. Henk, hello. Esther. Hello. Nice of you to join me on this Rotterdam rooftop. Uh, yeah. uh, very normal Rotterdam rooftop, not a green rooftop, not a very fancy rooftop. So you're gonna explain in a minute why we are here on this yes. rooftop. But first, like every roof topics, uh, what was your first rooftop memory? And then of course we start with the lady. Okay, well I was thinking about when I was in Paris with my parents when I was a little girl and we were on the rooftop of the Galerie Lafayette and we were looking down and there there were cars parked and in Paris they used the bumper to, to make space for a little so there yeah. was a little car and it bumped so it could park there and I was really with my father I was watching like wow this is why they have a bumper for a car <laughs> so this was really special memory so thank you for the question because it brought back memories really yes. nice <laughs> and you Jan Henk yeah, I, I, my rooftop, my earliest rooftop experience is uh, just at, in, in the house of my parents. I, I used to uh, have my bedroom next to the roof of the uh, garage. Yeah. And I could I had a little balcony thingy on top and I could uh, climb over and uh, walk on the roof. It was just a normal old fashioned pebble roof. Of course, there was some uh, spontaneous greenery here and there, yeah. um, uh, and I had to climb it a lot of times to pick up balls and stuff like that. <laughs> but I always enjoyed standing on the roof and uh, having a, uh, a bit more oversight than uh, from from ground level. Uh, so yeah, mm. I, maybe maybe the seed to to be active in rooftops uh, was actually born there. Oh well, it it was actually the same seed as me. I, I had the same bedroom with the same garage and the really? pebble rooftop. Okay very small so that that's, was really that's funny, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess a lot of people uh, recognize yeah. that experience yeah, yeah. and and uh, of course that was a rooftop well a bit like this which is unused and that's why we are here because you are uh, you from rooftop resolution you as Dake Diva uh, you are uh, well trying to make all the rooftops green in Rotterdam yeah, and green and multifunctional green and multifunctional yes. and uh, it's not like uh, there's a, a neighborhood approach and that's a word I really like. Can mm -hmm. one of you elaborate on that? Yeah, shall I pick that yeah, one that's up good. Uh, to yeah, start? Okay. Of course uh, <laughs> you can add. Um, yeah, the neighborhood approach is, is, is a, a bottom-up approach um, uh, where we really activate the people in the, in the neighborhoods to take action uh, and to first of all uh, think about their roofs and see the opportunities on those roofs. Um, and this, this works on neighborhood level because there people know each other and uh, there people can actually join forces to transform the roofscape of the neighborhood together. Um, uh, and of course, uh, at Rooftop Revolution, we like the revolutionary approach. And uh, <laughs> this is bottom up, really, really uh, from, from the ground up with the people. And that is a, that is a revolutionary approach to, yeah. to change rooftops. Okay, can you tell a bit more about Rooftop Revolution? Because you're the director of Rooftop Revolution. Yeah. Can you tell a bit about where this project stands among other projects or? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Rooftop Revolution started five years ago in the city of Amsterdam uh, with, with uh, like uh, a big call to all the people in the city to look out their windows and spot empty roofs and make something happen there. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, that was five years ago and uh, since then uh, we uh, uh, developed the neighborhood approach. First it was focused on singular roofs uh, and then we saw that the energy in the neighborhood is uh, really helpful uh, if you want to make change. Uh, yeah. So we had the first uh, pilot of a neighborhood approach in uh, the city of Amsterdam um, and uh, some years ago uh, I met uh, Esther um, uh, uh, the, uh, the Dake Diva in, in Rotterdam <laughs> and, we, uh, and we talked about uh, getting that approach to the city of, of Rotterdam um, uh, uh, because of course Rotterdam is a city with a lot of potential yeah. if, it, 
if it comes to roofs. So then you propose that to the municipality? Or yeah, so, so yeah. In the, the, the neighborhood approach is in the things that we at Rooftop Revolution do, uh, uh, is, is one of the things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it starts many times with uh, roof mapping. So uh, we talk to the city of uh, Rotterdam about uh, mapping rooftop opportunities. Uh, and of course you have the physical opportunities on the roofs uh, that you can examine based on, on data. Uh, you have of course the problems in the city uh, related to uh, climate change, uh, heat stress and uh, uh, water storage problems. Um, uh, so we map those, but an important aspect of the map is also the social opportunities. So together with Esther we conducted a lot of interviews in uh, uh, four neighborhoods that, that face particular problems uh, due to climate change and uh, water, water problems. Um, uh, and we mapped like the social opportunities in those neighborhoods to start uh, can you give an example, or maybe approach. you can give an example yeah. about uh, about how uh, an interview can help greening rooftops? Okay. Uh, what kind of mapping do we need? Okay. Well, we we did we did uh, interviews in for four areas, and one of them is this one where we are now. This is Hoogkwartier. Yeah. And we talked to Sanne van Maanen, uh, who is from MVRDV, and um, uh, she said, uh, "Well, this is an area where there's a lot of potential on the roofs." maybe even possible to put uh, housings on them and combine them with uh, green rooftops or solar panels. Um, so this is where the idea started to, to do things like that. And that's why we're on this roof, because this is one of the potential roofs. Um, we ask people, do you have a roof that you want to change? And Eveline, who lives here, she said, yes, this is a horrible rooftop. I want to make it beautiful. So that's how it started. Like. Sana told us about the problems in the area. We are already working on this area for several years. And the rooftops are really important there because we can use them to make this, these streets that are behind this, uh, this building. They are very ugly and not very nice places to be. So if we use them for a more lively use, then the whole neighborhood will be more yeah. social. And all the people and who green. live here can use the rooftop. Yeah, well, not all the people, because this is the first floor, okay, so yeah. that's what, where we have to find <laughs> a solution. How can we make everybody happy? But what, what is for all people is important that her, their view will improve very much. And uh, on this rooftop, they have a problem with uh, rainwater, you can see it. Yeah. Uh, and it's very hot. So. Yeah. And is there, uh, uh, I think that's a bit of the problem, that every rooftop has its own specifics and yeah. has its own problems, and you cannot have one solution for all the rooftops. How do you handle that? Yeah, um, uh, so we, we start with examining the situation and uh, uh, making a, a, a roof scan, a roof, roof advice based on the, the, the information that we have about the roof uh, and also talking to the people that own the roof or use the roof to see what, what they would like to do with that. And that information combined gives a first direction uh, towards what you can do with a roof, um, be because of course sometimes a roof is not strong enough to uh, to hold to hold a lot of water or to hold people, uh, so that can be a limitation in what you what you can do with a roof. And it's important to first examine uh, that uh, before taking next steps. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's also in the neighborhood approach. At first, you you the, the, you could say in the neighborhood approach, the campaign is really targeting the whole neighborhood. So we also make artist impressions. Uh, we made an artist to convince people. Yeah, mm -hmm. to, to make people to to sh to, to open people's eyes yeah. towards the opportunities on the roof. So uh, mm. this here in, in uh, Hoogkwartier, uh, MVRDV made made. Uh, we asked MVRDV to make uh, a visual um, in yeah. their particular the style. Architecture company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, uh, uh, and that image draws a lot of attention. So mm -hmm. a really, really a lot of people in Rotterdam and also in this neighborhood saw that image and thought, oh yeah. That is a good idea. We can mm. we can we can do so much more with the roof than we're doing now. Yeah. And this is like the first step. Mm -hmm. so, so to make people actually aware of their roofs and to make them dream about their roofs. And and uh, until what uh, level are you in the process mm -hmm. with people? And did, are you until the end, or is there coming someone who is going to uh, put it, make it green, and then you're finished? What, what's your role in the process? Uh, yeah, so, so we, we plant the seed um, uh, uh, and then we discuss, uh, we try to, to get the owner on the table uh, and all the people involved, we discuss the opportunities and then uh, when, when we have clear what, 
what we want to do with the roof, we involve um, a contractor or a number of contractors that can uh, uh, name, name a price for yeah. what has to be done. Um, uh, and then uh, we can help with uh, getting a subsidy if, the, yeah. if it applies. Yeah. Uh, this is something we also from do. the municipality. From the yes. municipality, yeah. Um, uh, we we can help with uh, um, permits if that's needed. Um, uh, uh, and if if it is uh, convenient, we can monitor the process of uh, building the roof. But yeah. the actually building actual building is done by the contractor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And 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 then uh, we do a lot of PR. Because if we have good examples, yeah. then we hope that more people think, oh, if, if that can be done, we can do it also. But it's That's a, an important part of the process. The process yeah. is very important because it's it's really difficult, especially in this area where there are a lot of, uh, how do you say, favor A's? Yeah, uh, 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 owners, owners uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in this Different building, people maybe there owning are 30 the owners, so yeah. how, how do we get them to to put money in a rooftop, uh, do they find it important? Does the owner of the building find it important? And how do we get them together? So that's uh, that's the big process. Yeah. So it's very important to to celebrate every success we can uh, show. And yeah. is then then money always a big thing? Not always. In other areas, sometimes there are VVEs who have a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Here also sometimes, but most of them. Yeah, it's really a problem. Most yeah. of the yeah. PVAs don't are not very rich, yeah. or there is already a lot to do on the building, so the rooftop is not a priority. Mm. Yeah. And, and w w what's the big argument? Is it uh, responsibility for the earth, or having a nice place to sit, or having a nice view, or w w what are the main arguments? It depends on who you're talking to. Uh, the rooftop owner is very interested when you tell them that the rooftop lasts twice as long when you make it green. So if they invest in a new rooftop and they me make it green, it, it's very interesting for them. For Evelyn who lives here, she wants a nice view and she wants to be able to sit here. Uh, some people are very interested in uh, having solar panels so they can use, the, um, use it to... Um, energy? Yeah, for energy and have a lower bill for energy. So. You really have to find what's important and where can we get them. Yeah. yeah. And you have picked uh, four neighborhoods in, mm -hmm. in Rotterdam. With the municipality. With the municipality. Yes. Was there a, a reason why those four? Yeah. Was there a, what reason? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, these neighborhoods were selected because of their particular problems uh, related to climate change. So these are all neighborhoods that face challenges uh, related to mostly uh, water. Uh, Water stress? No, water stress is not the yeah, right yeah, word. Yeah. Water retention. Water retention problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the, these neighborhoods, they, they, they can have uh, uh, too we much. We can see it here in this. Yeah. So this roof <laughs> has too much water, but it also uh, it can also be on street level. Yeah. Uh, and also heat stress. So it's a hoogstraat and uh, in, in hoogkwartier. Where we this are is now. a very yeah. build-up area. A lot of stone. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of lot of heat. Um, uh, uh, so that was, from a municipality's point of view, the main reason to select these four neighborhoods. Okay. And also uh, because of the different buildings. Yeah, ex yes. exactly. So the, yeah. the next reason is, uh, mm. in fact, uh, I think, uh, dual, because they are, from an uh, uh, architectural perspective, yeah. uh, very different. So Different typology of buildings. Different typology of buildings. Also owners. very dif different typology of owners. Um, uh, so one of the neighborhoods, Bloemhof, yeah. is mostly housing corporations. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, this area is a lot of uh, rather big housing. Uh, uh, VVAs. Yeah, VVAs. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is, I just association the of owners. Yes, yeah, association, association of, of ownership. Owners. Exactly. Um, uh, and in the other neighborhoods also there's, there's more a mix and then the next reason is also the level of organization in the neighborhoods. Yeah. So we are, this is a pilot uh, where we try to figure out how this neighborhood approach can work and can be rolled out in different neighborhoods mm -hmm. here in this city or maybe somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so we need like a, a good range of different types of neighborhoods also from a social perspective. So uh, one of the neighborhoods, Middelland, yes. is very well organized. They've, they've been doing bottom-up things together for, for a very long, long time, time. Yeah. so they and we also experienced that, that there's a lot of power we can almost let them go and, and do uh, it by themselves yeah we have to sometimes nudge them in the right direction mm -hmm. but they do a lot themselves also in in a whole quartier there's a lot of uh, self-organization already but yeah. in Bloemhof that's far less and also in, in uh, uh, at Nieuwe Westen yeah 
uh, this is this is starting the yeah. uh, the self organization, but this is really still uh, on a low level of organization. Yeah. So, yeah. in you have all different types of yeah. Yeah. Things and, and, in, and in the neighborhoods we have also one person we call the neighborhoods how do we call Aanjager? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What's the name? The someone who really the, the makes the revolution. Yeah. So that's yeah. someone who is who is um, known in the neighborhood, who knows a lot of people. Uh, so they can can work and make do the campaign and and get people yeah, yeah. moving that's what we yeah. do and that yeah. really works it really works when you have someone in the neighborhood who feels responsible yeah, feels responsible yeah and, and, who, and has, who, knows. who has an own network yeah yeah and that is very uh, of course someone has to be enthusiastic about the rooftops yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's also nice if, if someone has a, a big network uh, that can also has the potential to grow yeah uh, and get people involved mm -hmm. uh, and is there a specific ambition for this project, because we have an ambition as Rotterdam to green a lot of rooftop, but if for, for this rooftop, when will we call it a success? It's or is a, it? It's getting the information about the different areas so we know how to roll out in all yeah. Rotterdam and also finding out if, they, if we can make it a business case. Yeah. yeah. So, just of course, uh, there's in, in, uh, in, in rooftop. Uh, developing of, of rooftops, there's 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 money involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we try to figure out how we can make a business case on a neighborhood level to stimulate roofs, um, uh, rooftop usage, uh, greening rooftops, um, with less or me even maybe without help of the municipality. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is like the big question that we want to answer. If uh, under what circumstances is that possible, and what do we need to do to make that work? So if that if that if we can figure that one out, we can uh, roll out the neighborhood approach in all the neighborhoods in Rotterdam yeah. and, we and in but other cities, yeah, other cities. all over the world. All over the world. <laughs> and you, s um, I was on the the paper clip in one of the other roo roof topics, and uh, the guy from Woonstad said, "Don't make a business case." Yeah, he was very convinced about that, and and yeah. it's of course that uh, you said without help of the municipality, but you can also argue that uh, the water problem isn't a problem of a building or uh, an yeah, owner; I it's agree. a municipality problem. I completely yeah. agree. So and also yeah. heat stress if and things like that. If we focus too much on the business case mm -hmm. uh, for a, for an individual roof, it's not going to work. So I'm yeah. not really talking about business cases for roofs. But I'm talking about the business case for the neighborhood approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because uh, of, uh, I've, I agree that some of the uh, advantages of rooftops, greening rooftops yeah. or bluing rooftops, they are really uh, uh, they they have a lot of benefits, but there's it doesn't have a lot of return on investment. Yeah. Yes, and the benefits go to to the city and the citizens. So it's, it's or to very the health companies or to exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's really really uh, a good thing that the munici municipality participates mm -hmm. also financially in developing those. Rooftops. We don't ask for a return on investment on lamp posts or something. No, mm -hmm. exactly. Because we want light on the street yeah. because it makes it us better and we want yeah. no heat. Yeah. stress in the city and yeah. we need to invest in that. I, uh, yeah, in that sense uh, I think we completely agree. So it's, yeah. it's not, not about the business case for these for, for developing the right. roofs because uh, we have to look at, 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 the, at a broader, broader picture. Yeah. Um, it, has, it is a value case, we can make a value case and then I think it's a very positive outcome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, but the business case is not going to work. But I do think that it could be possible to have a business case for the Neuilly yeah. approach and for all the effort that uh, we put into a neighborhood to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so and, and, and then also the, 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 the good uh, examples and, and the positivity around it is very important. To yeah. yeah, you about. really have to keep yeah. the story going, to keep inspiring people, to keep showing both the, uh, the possibilities and the successes. Yeah. Uh, people have to see that it's really possible to transform such a roof yeah. and, and, uh, and, and believe in the opportunities. So and it's and not about square meters or something, it's about yeah, well, the process. That's one of the, uh, the projects we work with uh, at the municipality is 20 acres extra green in the city, um, of which I think takes to eight on the rooftops. So we work with that program and with the multifunctional rooftop program. And then program. 20 acres, that's how many of these rooftops? 100? <laughs> we have to do 6 to 8 on the rooftops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not 20, but 6 to 8, but still... Uh, it's a lot. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do. That is yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and of course, I mean, it's very clear that if we do not 
have success if we if we are if we don't have big success. I mean, we do have to transform uh, uh, a good number of rooftops to make this work. But it's yeah. it's your learning, so you don't yeah. have to be a success to be a success. Also, when you w the important thing is that we learn from this process, yes. and we can yeah, maybe after that do it in another way. Yeah. But that, uh, that, that, that is also, uh, uh, of course, the definition of success. I, yeah. I agree, and that's most the most important thing. But I do think that if you want to figure out uh, how you can keep such a campaign going, yeah. um, you need to show results at yeah. some point. And uh, at this point, we, we have a, a, a big potential, uh, very uh, concrete talks with, with many roof owners at this, yeah. at this moment. Uh, so if, if if a few of those actually succeed within the, n the next few years, yeah. in that sense we are successful. Mm -hmm. um, Is there an end date? Um, to the process or to the The assignment? end date of the pilot we're yeah. doing now is end of the year. This year? End yeah. of this okay. year, yes. And then... Uh, yeah, we'll, it, and then the pilot will move to the next phase. Yes. Because, uh, uh, I mean, we're not done. <laughs> After no, this year. No, 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 we just started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. will there be some kind of report? I expect people, I don't know, from a French city watching this thing to say, oh, I want to know the results. And uh, is there going to be a report that they can read and it's going to be public? Uh, that, is a, that is a good one. Of course, we will evaluate. Um, uh, at this point, we, we have not plans to publish, publish no, no, anything. No, the, the first report that's coming out now is the rooftop cata catalogus. Catalogus. Catalog. <laughs> yes, that, that will be launched in uh, the 4th of June. <laughs> Because that started here, uh, Sanna van MVRDV, they had, they had this Im amazing idea during the first interview we did with her to make a... a oh God. A catalog. Thank catalog. you. <laughs> 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 to show there is much more possible on the rooftop than, than only sedum or solar panels. And uh, so she took all the, the type of buildings here in this area and uh, made, I think, about 150 pictures about what is possible. So that's already a very big result of what we started here and yes I think it's a good idea uh, to uh, show at least in, in, in the Netherlands what type of owners uh, need what type of approach uh, so we can, can not only roll out in Rotterdam but in, whole, yeah. in the whole of the Netherlands. But especially roll out the process because yes. I think the process, process. of bottom-up that, that that's the whole Yeah thing well it's we kind of the process that we do is uh, top-down and bottom-up that's why we work with the municipality because they also have their powers uh, at least uh, for instance for the housing corporations that they have to need to, to maintain the, the rooftops so if, if they make a deal if you have to renew the building and then make it green or and so that's from the rooftops there was a, um, a story in the in the newspaper today about a housing corporation who said yeah we're going to make the rooftops green but that's on a very high level in the organization and what we do is we bring it up from the house owners that live in those houses and we want them <laughs> yeah so then it so works both ways yeah it, it works has to both, work both ways, ways because yeah. because you see now i mean at, at uh, uh, city level, uh, the elderman is really enthusiastic about this and is promoting rooftop uh, transformation. Most most of the directors at housing corporations uh, uh, are also in favor. Also, a lot of developers are talking about greening cities, um, uh, and uh, that that those ideas from from the top that has to meet. Uh, the ideas of the, the people that live in the city, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they have to come together. And there's quite a lot of layers in between that has to be convinced in the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you have to combine that top-down and the bottom-up approach to make to make something happen. Yeah. And then it comes together in the middle on the rooftop. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where it all comes together. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, thank you for explaining this. I hope also with this talk we have inspired people and uh, they can always look at the, 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 the Rooftop Revolution uh, website or uh, the, the Rotterdam Municipality website. Yes. And uh, I, I, I'm very curious how this project will uh, continue and maybe in a year time we will meet again. Yeah, to yeah. Talk about be it. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we're also yeah. curious. Maybe this rooftop will be green. Yeah, it, <laughs> then it will, will be. be here it again. will be. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Thank you for your time. And thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much.